Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And we are back for another World Death Analysis. Today it's going to be Espeon Garbodor after John Eng was able to win the most recent ARG uh, tournament, which was a cash tournament that had Burning Shadows legal. So it's really the only sort of first look we can have for the predicted World's metagame. And Espeon Garbodor ended up coming out on top. And it's quite surprising for some, because many people wrote off Espeon GX due to uh, the prevalence of potentially Gardevoir GX, and additionally the fact that Psybeam inherently gets a little bit easier to play around now that we have Guzma and Acerola in different lists. Um, the confusion aspect of Espeon is much weaker now o uh, overall. However, uh, John was able to take the result, and uh, I really liked his list actually. I thought it was very straightforward, but pretty much has answers for just about everything in the format, so it's pretty much, he went with an old favourite, a safe deck, and he ended up doing well with it, so maybe it was just because it was an early tournament and he was beating decks that weren't fully optimised, because, um, you know, some people may not have been going to Worlds and were still at the ARG tournament, and sometimes people are experimenting with stuff before Worlds itself, maybe some people will be there with riskier decks, and he's just getting through them, because he has... A pretty much optimal 60 of Espeon. The list that I'm actually showing is different from his, so I would say not optimal because I think mine is better, um, but really I made like two changes. Yeah, two changes. Um, he played 4N and 0 Bridget, which I don't agree with, and then I changed... Uh, I think he either played two Guzma. Yeah, I think he played two Guzma, and I've gone for the 1-1 split. That one is very much more debatable. I don't think it's uh, right or wrong either way. But I do think that Bridget was a bigger mission from his list, and that's the only reason that I've made the changes. But otherwise, I think super solid 60 uh, for an archetype that is also just very safe and simple. So, let's have a look at the archetype. We have four of the Eevees with Energy Evolution. Still phenomenal. It's a great ability to have. When you attach one of these Psych Energies, we can search a deck and find our main attacker, which is Espeon GX. You can see we're playing a 4-3 line, but we also have these other evolutions in here for type coverage as well, so that's why we need to have the 4 counts. The Espeon GX is the main attacker. 200 HP as a stage 1 is a little bit below the par, but it's pretty much the same as all the evolutions, I believe. And it has the 3 attacks. The first I've already talked about, Psy Beam for a single Psychic, um, confuses the opponent's active whilst doing 30 damage. That 30 poke is decent, especially with Choice Band, that could be 60. And uh, Confusion is awkward for still a bunch of decks. Now, there are some evolutions in the format, which obviously get around it simply by evolving out. Uh, we have Guzma, we have Acerola, we have Switch. Um, there's plenty of ways people can get out of the active. Um, it's just a lot of the time, if there's basic decks, they may have to be flipping the coin, or they may not want to risk it ever. And Psybeam is actually like a front-runner attack in the Gardevoir matchup, I've found. Because you don't want to commit energy to your own Espeon, because it will simply power up their Gardevoir, you're much better off going for a very slow approach where you're just slowly tapping away with Psybeam and doing the 60, making them commit energy, so that if they commit energy and get the knockout, you can respond with a Psychic on the bench, uh, but if they flip tails, you can carry on going for the Psybeam, or you can finish them off with Psychic, because now they've taken more damage and they get themselves into range. So, Psybeam's still the key of a few matchups for certain and uh, still a very helpful tool for us, and getting good early damage on the board. Psychic is then its main attack for a Psychic and double colourless. We deal 60 base, which isn't too high, but we deal an extra 30 times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active. So we know there's a few archetypes that need to stack energy on themselves. Think about the likes of Volcanians. ho OGX is also getting into Volcanian lists, which needs 4 energy. That's actually important to note because... We play Vaporeon to improve the Volcanian matchup. Ho-Oh obviously doesn't have water weakness, but it does need to require full energy on itself, so you can still get over it fairly routinely. Um, then there's Gardevoir, of course, which enjoys putting energy on itself. It obviously can function, so function off of one energy, but especially when we're confusing it, it feels like they just sort of have to pass their turns away if we just continually confuse. Um, there's no point in them flipping a coin to only deal 60 back to us. Um, so, yeah they need to start stacking energy on themselves to actually get meaningful damage on the board. Um, then there's even things like Nine Tails. there's uh, Decidueye requires 3 energy. Most of the time, Psyche is in and around 120 to 150. Um, if you have Choice Band, you can sometimes push that up to one-shots, and that's what's very important. We can get one-hit KOs 
against some big powered up attackers with the psychic attack which is very good for us and uh, yeah it's just decent it's a decent amount of output we have the GX attack as well, Divide GX, putting 10 counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you like. Obviously, this is going to be great for Gyarados, which popped up also with the ARG tournament. Um, it's also going to help out against a bunch of other things. Setting up damage, like I mentioned earlier, you're doing around like 150. And against things like Decidueye, you can hit them for 150. They are always pretty much going to retreat, and then you can GX attack to finish them off later on. Or if that other low HP evolving Pokemon... Uh, things like Vespiquen, you can deal with two combis all at once with Divide GX. You can pretty much just make sure your math is fixed via Divide. It's a very flexible, very good attack that can get around all sorts of things. So it's a very cool option to have for the card. I've been a fan of Espeon since its release. Uh, so pretty happy to see it uh, as the front runner in this list combined with the Garbodor, of course. So we are playing the one Flareon for its ability Flare Effect. Each of your Stage 1 Pokemon is now a Fire Pokemon as... Uh, in addition to its other type. So gaining the fire typing, of course, important for Metagross, which has potentially popped up or will be popping up in Worlds uh, because of its metal typing to deal with Gardevoir. Additionally, we can once again go back to Decidueye and hit that for weakness and get one hit goes on them when normally they rely on tanking. Additionally, there's Glissapod, which is a bit of a question mark whether or not that will show up. Um, we can do a Psychic with a Choice Band and Flareon in play to one hit code them. So we do cover a lot with Flareon. It's a very decent ability. It's very good to have a Fire Typing. That's one of the reasons why Volcanion is so popular right now, because the Fire Typing is important. Uh, so us being able to take that Fire Typing in the right matchups is going to be perfect. We also play the Vaporeon, actually, so that we beat Volcanion players. Um, obviously, we can one hit KO Volcanion even without the... Um, help of Vaporeon um, with Psychic because they require three on themselves. We can just go Choice Band KO, but they do play other Pokemon now in their lists, especially Turtonator, which discards energy from itself, which makes it a lot harder for us to get KOs with the Espeon unless we have the Vaporeon in the list. It just feels a lot more secure having the one of in here than going without it. It even helps out against like the Baby Volcanion. We can do much more meaningful damage. Psybeam now doing um, 60 and confusing, which is better than just like literally prodding. Uh, it just speeds up the game, really, and promotes like a non EX threat on the board for them to have to deal with as well. So, very good one of, I think, worth the inclusion for Worlds because Volcanion is anticipated to be a large and popular archetype. So, we are pairing him with, Ga uh, with Garbodor. We know how powerful this guy is. We're playing the Acid Spray Trubbish as per usual. And three of the Trashalanche Garbodors. Trashalanche dealing 20 times the amount of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. Still a very strong attack. Um, so many decks still super reliant on Versus Seeker, Ultra Ball, um, and all sorts of other items as well. Lots of tool cards being played at the moment. Floatstone and Choice Band among them. So being able to cash in on these sorts of things is going to be phenomenal, phenomenal for you. And provides great late game damage output for certain. If Espeon is your early game, Garbodor is certainly your late game. Um, one great thing about the confusion aspect of Espeon is that it forces people to find answers, and oftentimes they need to dig through their deck to start finding these answers. Um, even if it is like they're digging for a floatstone to move out the active into another attacker, they need to be digging this whole time. So it's a really nice combo having Espeon with Garb. It's a nice, neat partner. And uh, we have the Acid Spray as well if we want to be able to discard energy in a pinch. But typically, it's just the Trash Lanch here. It also just makes the player play their game so differently from turn one, pretty much. It is a very nice hidden value that you don't often see because people will end up passing turns when they don't really want to just because they don't think they can afford a Sycamore on that certain turn, for example. We are then playing the one Garbatoxin Garbador. Ability Lock is phenomenal. It's going to be great for the likes of Greninja... Uh, Vikavolt, Tapu, Bulu, uh, even Volcanion. You can flirt between Vaporeon and Garbodor. It's a fun thing that you can do to sort of present different threats to them at different times. Um, Going to be helpful for all sorts of ability lock decks. Uh, uh, sorry, ability reliant decks. Decidueye, obviously, if you can get this established before Vileplume, it could be incredible as well. So, very nice ability to have. Obviously, there is Field Blower in the format, so it's not permanent ability lock like it used to be, but still a powerful option. And shout out to Ryan Morehouse for going for an offensive bomb in the regional championships. <laughs> Finally, we have uh, three Tapu Lele GX. 
for that Wonder Tag ability, when you play it onto the bench, you can search your deck for a supporter card and put it to the hand. Phenomenal, of course, keeping us consistent, getting us into the ounce that we need, getting us a turn one Bridget, which I believe is really important for the deck, as long as you have energy in hand, which, you know, we play 12, we oftentimes will. Uh, just a really, really solid card. We have the Tapicure available, healing all damage from two of your Pokemon. Uh, typically, you like Divide GX in the deck, but there may be times when healing is the best approach. Again, think about Decidueye. This could be important if people are trying to set up a Devolve combo against you. If they've been doing all sorts of flying flips and whatnot, you could go for a Tapu Cure approach instead in that matchup. So bear this in mind. Uh, we then, of course, have Energy Drive available to us as well. Uh, similar to Espeon's attack, it does 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So we can have control of the damage a little bit more this way by stacking energy onto Tapu Lele, but bear in mind, oftentimes we'll be more efficient with our other attackers, so uh, bear the GX attack in mind, it may come in clutch at times, but typically it's just the ability. For items, we are using one Rescue Stretcher. You can see we play a couple of one-offs, a couple of important one-offs actually. Uh, the Evolutions could be important in certain matchups, and the Garbatoxin as well, very important card. So recovering these if they are Guzma or Lysander KO'd is going to be important. And just in general, making sure we have enough attackers in the game is going to be preferable. We are playing two Field Blower. It is one of the ways we can, can uh, contest the Stadium War. We're only playing one Stadium ourselves, so Field Blower gets the job done in that regard. Also, we are able to get rid of Tools. Uh, getting rid of Fighting Fury Belts on things like Volcanians could be important if you can't establish uh, Vaporeon. Or getting it off things like Ho-Oh as well could be nice. Um, additionally... We are just simply getting more items in the discard pile this way, fueling the Trash Lanch Garbodor. So, a uh, Field Blower, a very versatile, powerful card that we are playing the two, co uh, two count of. Three Versus Seeker to respam our supporters, as well as four Ultra Ball to find ourselves Lele, which pretty much gets us going via a Bridget, or any of our other attackers throughout the game. One copy of Parallel City. This is a pretty cool inclusion from him. And it's a, just still a really good card. It's one of the only decks that doesn't require a stadium, so you are actually able to benefit from uh, the Parallel City, which serves so many purposes right now. Limiting your own bench can deny uh, double prizes if you need to play a single prize game. Uh, you can wipe off heavily damaged Pokemon like an Espeon. You could take a hit and then pay retreat and parallel it off the board. Similarly, you could parallel Lele's off the board and just pretty much leave the opponent with like three Garbodors to deal with, which is... A really cool board state to have. Additionally, you can limit your opponent's side of the bench if it's something like a Rayquaza deck, which could be very, very powerful. And again, reducing uh, the damage output from things like Decidueye or Galissapod, Volcanion, Greninja. There's all sorts you can reduce their damage for, and even that can be clutch at times. So Parallel is still a very versatile, strong card. I really want to weave two in here because I think it's so strong. I don't see an immediate cut because uh, I really like the three Lele as well. So... Uh, I would think about weaving two into the deck, but for now, just the one count is what John went for, and we'll stick with him because he's pretty good at this game. <laughs> Next up, we'll have uh, the Bridget. This is the one card that I pretty much was amazed to see not in his list. It's in so many deck lists right now. It's in pretty much everyone's lists, uh, other than like Volcanion, because that's a heavy EX deck, and you can't get the good part of Bridget's effect off. But here we can get huge value, and when you play three Lele as well, it's astonishing that he didn't go for this because it really sets up the board nicely, gets you multiple EVs out, gets you multiple Trubbish if it's the correct matchup. It just really gets you going in every game, so I love having the single copy of Bridget for sure. I've gone for the 1-1 split of the sort of gusting supporters, I guess you could call them. One Guzma is going to be nice, of course. We do have four Floatstone, so it's rare that we won't be able to, or it's rare that we'll be hindered by the switching effect of Guzma. And at the same time, having the switching effect can help out because he's a supporter means of switching, which against things like Decidueye variants could be really important if the opponent is going to try and stall us active. So Guzma is going to be nice indeed. And the one of Lysander, just because um, there might be those times when it's detrimental for you to switch to the bench. Uh, we do have lots of things with Floatstone, but if they are all removed, we could be in trouble. Or at least in early turns, we could just have the option. I think with 3 Lele, 3 VS Seeker, having the 1-1 one -one split seems kind of fine. If you're expecting lots and lots of uh, item lock, potentially you can go for double Guzma. That would be my only instinct as to why he went for this double Guzma and no Lysander. But that's just me. Maybe there's more reasons. Let me know down below. Uh, 3N, I still think it's fine. A high count is still a high count. And uh, 
still important for reducing the opponent's hand size. Oftentimes we get better towards the late game and uh, when Garbodor is hitting huge numbers, when you're combining that with enemy opponent down to two or three prizes or two or three cards in their hand, uh, it can be hard to respond to. And for Professor Sycamore as well, allowing you to just dig and cycle hard. We've got to find DCs on certain turns. Float stones are one-off pieces are also important. So Sycamore is still a very powerful draw option. Tools include three choice band, going to improve obviously all of our numbers on all of our dudes, going to be really nice, and uh, the fourth float stone. Integral for getting onto Garbodor at all times pretty much, as well as helping us move out of the active if we have started something suboptimal, or if it's just like a Trubbish for example, we can move him to the bench, evolve up later, get into our EV and start uh, swinging basically. And the energy is just a very simple four double colourless, four, uh, sorry, eight psychic energy. To use all of our attacks, I believe it's plenty to get us through pretty much every game. So, let's have a look at a few other options in the deck. Orokoro has been a card that has sometimes been seen in lists. It's a pretty good mirror match card, as well as being good against things like Vespiquen. And also, um, it's in addition to the GX attack, it can be helpful against Gyarados. Uh, so, that could be a helpful one of you could go for. Another one I've heard a few people whisper about is uh, Jirachi. Going for that Stardust can be really important against a few archetypes, and it again could be a cool option against um, Gardevoir GX, because they often require double colorless energy. You can go for a choice banded Stardust and actually deal a really meaningful amount of damage at the 80 benchmark with that band, and also present a real threat for the opponent that they can't really do much to the Jirachi in the, in the following turns. So it's a bit of extra disruption in there could be helpful. And there's a few other double colorless energy reliant decks out there things like um rayquaza as well because we have the garbatoxin that we can put online we don't even care if they have mcginn on the board stardust can still get value uh, even to an extent things like mirror matches or Drampa garbs there's all sorts there's so many decks playing dc jirachi still a decent option in the deck if you want to go for that another card is the stage one jolteon speaking of um rayquaza you could just go this approach. Personally, I think that Garbatoxin is more powerful, and that's why I've not gone for the Jolteon against Rayquaza. It's much better to limit their abilities. Um, so we're going to try and use like Blowers plus Parallel plus Garbodor. That's going to be our win condition. That's why you're not seeing a Jolteon in here. A couple other cards I would consider. I think one of the only ones actually is the Teammates. Um, something that we've seen in definitely in uh, Drampa Garbodor variants used to great effect. And some Espeon Garbs used to play it as well for the North American Internationals. I know it was becoming more and more staple. Seeing it not in this list is a little bit saddening because you play a lot of single copies. Uh, grabbing that Garbatoxin, grabbing the right evolution for the right situation could be amazing for you. I just don't see much space here unless you want to take the risk and take Paralysis out the deck. Uh, or maybe the Vaporeon out the deck. These are like the most greedy slots, I guess. Everything else is like 100% standard. I would say like Lele, Vaporeon and Parallel would be like the only floating spots I can actually see in the deck. Um, so maybe play around with those three slots to try and weave in a teammates because it's a really good card in the deck as well. So yeah, that would be pretty much it. Um, but really I like the simplicity of Espeon Garb. It's been around long enough to know a good list and um, pretty much it's just a safe pick if you want to go to Worlds. Um, there are still question marks about Guardi. Uh, you really need Confusion to be on your side. Um, but I think it's still a winnable matchup, to be honest, uh, from what I've seen so far. So let's see how it can compete in the general field of battle. Uh, obviously still a decent deck against the likes of Volcanion and Decidueye. That's why it was so popular for the NAIC in the first place. So... Let's uh, see how we do here. We lead with a Tapu Lele, which isn't too shabby. We have an Ultra Ball uh, to grab ourselves Bridget if we want to. It's pretty much always what I want to do. And looks like we are up against Volk. Brooklet Hill we can't get value for. Bit annoying. We're going to see them Brooklet for a Staryu. Going to see a Steam up as well. Maybe this indicates they'll be using a Sycamore at some point later this turn. I'm just going to use an N. Okay, they wanted to get the fire in the discard pile. That makes sense. So an N is not a Kiawe. Can confirm. Ooh, it's a much more awkward hand. Oh, such an awkward hand. 
Okay, we want to Brooklyn Hill and see if the, uh... Okay, Rescue Stretcher's in deck. We really need Rescue Stretcher. <laughs> like, straight away. Because <laughs> we need to Sycamore here. Ugh, oh, grim. Okay. Because we want this target, this target, this target all back in the deck. We gotta find Rescue Stretcher. <laughs> pretty quickly. From our opening Sycamore. Oh my goodness, that is not ideal. Uh, we can't even go Ultra Ball Eevee attach because we drew into our Espeon. I think we still have to Ultra Ball Eevee attach, it's just a lot worse now. So, we're gonna get rid of these two. Grab Eevee, because look, no more Espeons in the deck because we've prized one. We will uh, get the attachment in. And we will just pass it here. Very awkward discards on our turn one there. But we should be able to navigate around this. The opponent's played no items so far. They're gonna use their first item of the game. It's gonna be an ultra ball. Grabbing themselves a Tapu Lele. Maybe this is a Kiawe turn. Who knows? Gonna see another steam up. That kind of indicates that it won't be a Kiawe. Gonna steam up again. Double steam up. Probably just Sycamore. They're gonna look to find uh, Floatstone and get some power heaters going. There is the Sycamore getting rid of Super Rod, which is not something you often see in the list. There's a Ho-Oh GX. As you can see, not weak to water. If they pour on, it's sad. Let's see if they can find themselves a Baby Volk and even another attachment. They were kind of greedy by doing double steam ups before attaching. Let's see if they can actually get some going. They are choosing to develop Ho-Oh. No mangle attachment for turn, so their greed was kind of punished there, uh, which is always good to see. We are going to, or good for us at least, we are going to choice band up, and I'm fairly happy to end, but their hand was really slow. We don't have fire in the hand, so maybe we just sycamore. What do we need this turn? I mean, DC float is the dream. We want to get more EVs developed. We want to get a lot going. Uh, the bench is pretty important as well though in this matchup. Let's go for the end. Let's go for the end. Okay. We're gonna bench EV. I'm just gonna attach retreat and get some damage in on this guy. Um. I think it's fine. 60 isn't all that meaningful, actually. Maybe we just continue to develop more EVs. Or just even attach Trubbish. 246. Let's just leave this active because he's likely going to look for Baby Volk again next turn. Let's do it this way. Okay, there's Baby Volk. As long as he's not got Guzma, I'm pretty happy here. Okay, Kiawe is fine. That's his turn done. He's gonna build up that Ho-Oh, it looks like. Come here, Ho-Oh. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, yeah. And now you see the risks of Kiawe. <laughs> Pretty much. That's a freebie. Nice top deck from us. Hmm. 7 energy in his discard pile now. He needs to develop Starmie pretty quick. Something boding well for him though is that we still haven't found 
uh, rescue stretcher, and we still have an Espion in our prizes. There is the Starmie. And a Turtonator hits the board, and we see an N. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm going to see the space beacon. Is it one twenty? Ooh, okay, we can KO him with Garbodor now with our field blower in hand. That's going to be a priority for sure. Protect the Espion. Lodestone is a burnable card here. We'll grab our garb. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen with the blower. That Sycamore. Developing Trubbish Float sounds really good here as well. Parallel doesn't achieve too much. We will pay retreat though. This attachment's an interesting one. We only have one Espeon. So attaching it to the EV sounds wrong. Attaching it to Trubbish sounds wrong because we only have one Trash Launch as well. Uh, because of more awkward prizes. Uh, so I think we just have to do this. If he does go for like a Guzma play, um, we can't really do much about it. Hopefully this one prize will help us get maybe another Garbodor or something along those lines. Not going to commit Parallel City, even though we could get rid of our own Lele. Don't think it's the right move just yet. We actually need to keep our bench space open. And doing it against him, I mean, it gets rid of, like, these two targets, I guess. Maybe it is good here. Limits his, like, Lele draw, because he only has three cards in hand. Oh, no, it doesn't limit Lele draw, because we're going to be KOing this. I think I just want to get this out of the hand, because we'll be going to three prizes. It seems fairly decent here. Wiping a Volcanian EX off his board. Okay, this seems fine. So we have gone up in prizes. We grab ourselves a double colorless, which isn't too helpful here. Up comes the Turtonator GX. Maybe he has Guzma Energy in hand. Oh, he has Floatstone. Floatstone for the bench, though. Just going to play an N. Not a great hand. There's the space beacon. Grabbing some energies. Let's see a steam up. Turtonator gets benched and attached to. So just gonna shell trap. That seems really slow. Really slow indeed. Bridget hasn't actually isn't terrible here. It's not as terrible as it looks. It does limit one out for, or two outs for us actually. Maybe I just burn it. Just get rid of it. It's actually four outs. Yeah, we can't play we can't put the Trubbish to bench unless we know we're gonna get knocked out next turn. Which could well be the case. <laughs> uh we are dealing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, but taking Shell Trap damage in the process. So we retreat here to take the Shell Trap. We could retreat Tapu Cure if we want to. We could retreat GX Attack. GX Attack and take the Starmie out. 
I don't mind that, that seems fine. So let's do this. We'll put ourselves to two prizes. Racing very aggressively. And then we have Garbodors to back ourselves up. If we eventually find Rescue Stretcher, we can just find ourselves a KO that way. If this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, this is not damaged, so we can put the one here. Espeon out the prize. Not too shabby. So all of their big Pokemon are ready to get swinging. So although we are up in the prize trade, we're not too content just to... Ooh, they're playing an Elixir. Well, that's just 20 damage, isn't it? He's playing another one. Hello? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 4, 5, 6, 7... Eight nine, that's just game, right? Just giving us game. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting line. Yep, it's game. There's no way around it. It's definitely game. Definitely not the right line of play from our opponent there. Well, we were able to navigate with basically one attacker. <laughs> Two attackers that whole game. Nice. No need for Vaporeon. No need for Garbatoxin. Just out hit him. Madness. Okay. Let's uh, have another game there. Able to win the flip. Get a pretty nice start here. Lele lead for the opponent. We'll kick off with our own Lele. Bridget is something I probably want here. Because I can ultra ball for Lele turn two. We can get rid of like Espeon and something else. So when you don't know what you're playing against, I think the rule of thumb is to get two of each. So we have currently an EV active. So we'll just do this and be pretty content to do that. My attachment is an interesting one. If I attach DCE, to Eevee, I can potentially go into Espeon next turn. Obviously I won't do it active because he can just attach energy drive if he plays double colorless. I think it's just this, because many decks can't afford to just DCE Lysander end turn, or like take the prize. So I think this is safe. We have Floatstone in hand to move this Eevee if need be. Okay, they have DCE, they have Sycamore. Sycamore is not Lysander. Looks like we're in a mirror match. Or at least, yeah, it's actually, it's a proper mirror match. Okay, interesting. Interesting. They play teammates. I'm jealous. <laughs> teammates actually really good in mirror matches as well. They play Shaman though. Shaman could be an easy way to win this game. Two, four, six. We're at 90 against the Shaman already. I think the 
Fodders for 40. Hmm. Don't discard any of these cards. But I need to cycle. I think Garbatoxin will definitely go. I think it's just Garb Espion that goes. We need Tapu Lele here. You'd never really want to develop Garbatoxin against a mirror match because you need to have an army of Garbs. Hmm. I can even attach active, go for like confusion plays against him. Hmm. This is the safest thing, I think. Well, where do, who do I actually want to attack with this turn? 2, 4, 6. I will have played 2, 4, 6, I guess. But he only has one Trubbish out, so we could just respond on his. So we want to attack with Garbador this turn, if we can. I think Garbador attacking would be our best play. Because it basically forces his only threat out. Okay. I'll hold the rest. I don't feel like I need to Ultra Ball for, like, Espeon or anything just yet. Right, the opponent does go for that Energy Evolution. Choice band. Floatstone. Just an energy drive, interesting. Let's Guzma this. We'll deal 246, 9, 180. And then we can do 80 here and 2 here with our GX attack to take 4 prizes later on. Sounds pretty good. He can do some cool um, spreading if he wants to next turn, but I think it's really bad for him if he does. Uh, we should just commit this to Lele though. And we won't play any more items. I don't see a reason to. <sighs> There's his own trash launch. As a DC, is he just going to go for the two prizes? Is he going to go for the... Yeah, okay. Okay, so he's going to deal with the Garbodor and then the Eevee. This makes sense. We have Floatstone. Two, 
two, four, six. Okay. So this is going to be a four prize turn for us, which is pretty sweet. Two, four, six, it'll be eight. Don't need to bench another Eevee this game. We just need to develop Lele. Get ourselves Sycamore, I believe. Could go for N for disruption, actually. Make it a little bit harder for them to uh, find themselves energy. But only energy is all they need, and we still need to develop Garbodor. Uh, this may be greedy, but I nah, actually we keep the Ultra Ball as well, so we're kind of like keeping the same amount of ounce to find Garbodor. I like the end. I'm gonna just get rid of parallel and Espeon here. They're pretty dead weight cards, and we just want a garb. And we'll do the cute divide play. Two and eight. That equals numbers. So he comes in with garb, then we come in with garb, and it's over, right? That's the plan. Obviously, them ending us to two could make life a little bit more awkward, but we've ended them to four, so... I wonder if they feel comfortable ending themselves again if they don't already have Psychic Energy. I mean, our hand size is pretty large. He probably has to end. None in his discard pile, so he has to have a physical end or Lele here. Yeah, mate, I'm recording. No worries. I'll come out in like 10 minutes. Just my cousin. <laughs> Okay, see a field blower. That's an inconsequential card. Choice band is also to an extent. It's probably having me a debate around Sycamore or N. Three energies gone. Okay, they are going to N. Taking the risk, but he pretty much has to with the board states where we're at. I had way too many cards in the hand. We get ended a pretty sad state of affairs, and he got the psychic energy. Problems have emerged. Problems have indeed emerged here, guys. Mm, and that is how quickly it can flip. Ah. And that is how quickly it can flip back. Okay, now we're rocking. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It'll be twelve. This means I could even KO like Lele's if he has to Sky Return next turn. I'm assuming I hit Psychic here. So now we feel pretty good. Pretty nice top deck from us. Pretty skillful. Let's trash. One prize away, his board state is pretty weak. Potentially could go for like confusion plays next turn though. So we're not gonna write him out of the game. If nothing else, he can take it to like a quote-unquote 50-50. If he combines it with an N, it could be very awkward. Right now we have the Guzma in 
the discard that we could just versus seeker back. But if he combines it with a N, we could once again be in an awkward spot. Okay. Do we have to survive a round two of ends? Let's find out. Ultra Ball is Lele, which is probably also N. Okay. We gotta survive another N slash flip heads. These are our options. The 50 50 wins us the game. And if we miss, we don't lose the game. So I'll definitely flip the coin next turn if I don't have an out to Guzma. Oh, Kakui. That's not game. Is he out of ends? He must have prized two? Okay, that's game then. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. We'll just uh, do this, I guess. Could have just retreated the Lele, but whatevs. Nice. That was a pretty fortunate win, I would say. Survived the end. Let's have a... Is that a second game? Yeah, let's have one more. Let's have one more. Mirror matches may be something... You would expect much less of going into worlds because it's not as popular as it had as it has been. A lot less garbles floating around because of the worry of things like Gardevoir. And Volcanion now gaining Kiawe also improves its matchup, so um, maybe you wouldn't have to play against many uh, mirrors anymore. But maybe you will. <laughs> I don't know. I have lots of predictions about worlds, and uh, I'm imagining that none of them will come true. We are up against a Metagross player. Metagross, not the easiest of matchups. We do have Flareon and Stretcher and Garbodor. Obviously, we can't have Garbotoxin and Flareon in at the same time, but we have different threats that we can present here for certain. The opponent's going to lay for a Hex here. That is incredible. Oh my dear. They're also going to fly the Beldum. There is the Hex Maniac. How frustrating. Well, because it's Metagross, we know he doesn't play DCE, so we can just DCE EV pass. Uh, quick draw. Yes, yes. No, no. Ultra balling away a max potion is good for us. The Lele in Hex was so weird. <laughs> Metagross is a deck that wants to simply set up its own side of the board. For some reason he felt more comfortable just firing off a Hex. Gets an energy down. Yeah. 
Gonna move out of the way. So let's start with a evolution. Flareon is in deck. Garbatoxin is in deck. This is all good news. Is Stretcher in deck? Yes. Excellent news. We have the answers that we require to win this game. We have an energy attachment. I will Ultra Ball for the uh, Lele here. No, I won't because we prized Bridget and I didn't check. We will Ultra Ball for Vaporeon to thin it from the deck so that we can sicker more. Great news. Floatstone is fine on an Eevee. 2468. No backup Pokemon is frustrating. Attacking a Lele seems inconsequential because of the max potions that they could play. Where's Bridget? I want to Ultra Ball out Trubbish here, but then we're still left without a supporter. How many energy in this discard pile? One. So in theory, don't need the choice band. I'm gonna do this. This is maybe greedy. But this should sustain us for the next few turns. And we're gonna be taking a prize here. Cash in on Divide GX now. Like I said, the damage on the Lele is not helpful, I think, a lot of the time. And it makes it less likely for him to actually respond with an attack as well, because he has to attach retreat and get... He literally can't do it, so... We'll just throw one on a Belden, why not? Bridget? <sighs> DC's fine. DC is fine. What are we worried about? Energy Choice Band, VS Seeker, going to be an N, we'll take it, our greed has paid off. Yep, that'll be a scoop. Right. That's going to be it for Espeon Garbodor. Performing decently. We've had some awkward hands at times. It does have the potential to get a little bit janky. Um, we made a ballsy play near the end, but it was like a tempo play more than anything else, and it forced them to respond. And when opponents see you like ultra balling for those sorts of things, they often think you have a hand, uh, because naturally it doesn't make sense for you to do it otherwise. <laughs> you know, sometimes making the dumb play makes them think that you're making the smart play, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, there's the list. John Eng, congrats to him. Good list. And uh, he pretty much put Espeon Guard potentially back on the map for Worlds. So, who knows? Let me know what you think about the list and uh, the archetype in general. Can it perform at Worlds? What's its worst matchups? What does it have to fear? And uh, everything like that. All down below. Please leave a like to the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnifolk, and if you're heading to Worlds, I'll be seeing you there, because I'll be grabbing a flight in two days' time. So there'll be just one more video tomorrow, and uh, it will be Worlds time. So I haven't even figured out what video it's going to be tomorrow. I'll think of something. You'll love it. It'll be fine. Come back tomorrow and see what I've got for you. Cheers.